So it started, um, it started with a piece about that size, uh, and I, this size is good because every time I come home to New Orleans, I fly back with at least three or four paintings because <laughs> I, I love what um, happens there. I, I work in my mom's uh, old garage that uh, I was born and raised in the same house, so. It's like really familiar to me, and uh, when I paint pieces in New Orleans, I find the colors are stronger for some reason, and I'm not exactly sure why. Um, I'm sure it has to do with light. It might just have to do with me, and um, <laughs> it makes sense. It makes sense of the. Um, like the color is changing from environment to environment. That really makes sense. And also, um, you know, if I you have like these, the, the change kind of also from the palette, like in this first room over here, uh -huh. um, you know, you can kind of see the black and white and more subdued color. And then here you get a little bit different. And then by the end, you're like, whoa! Like you, <laughs> <laughs> woo! My <wrong> color! <laughs> Um, do, you, do you want to talk a little, like a little bit about that at all? Like, I, you know, about the. Oh, sure. Actually, that that kind of leads off where I left. Okay. Uh, in that the, the color. Um, so, one of the things I realized when I was in New Orleans uh, last Christmas, I was working on three pieces, and I flew back with them. And I had been working, uh, Michael and I bought a brownstone um, five years ago. And uh, I made a conscious decision to start working more regularly on paintings. And uh, I was working in our basement up until, um, up until the end of last year. And I was struggling with it. I was like, I, was, I didn't like the colors. Things weren't working. I'd bring them upstairs, and I'd be like, "Eh." There was no like magic with them. And then I brought five pieces home uh, after being in New Orleans for Christmas, and um, I, it it took me a few days. But then I I I just said, "Could it be the light?" And then I was like, "You idiot! It is the light because <laughs> there's no light in my basement." So. Uh, I, uh, I asked Michael if it would be cool to transform my spare bedroom, uh, our spare bedroom into my studio, which is on the third floor, and I get northern light, and uh, it kind of changed everything. <laughs> um, and pieces started um, popping, and I started becoming excited about it again. And uh, like these two were started. Um, they're at the end of last year, but these were two specific ones that I brought back from New Orleans um, from 2015. Um, so they kind of started everything. And a lot of times I work on like two or three or four at the same time, especially like, because you know, uh, like there's drying times in between layers. Uh, and it's, sometimes I'll do something as as free as this, or and then other times I'll do something that's more structured and quiet. Or and I don't know why. I, I, th I guess I just do it as the painting. I, I feel what each one needs. Or um, yeah. And then sort of do what I found really fascinating and how this kind of came to be on the wall is you started to place them over a staircase in your home. Yeah. So we took we took a photo yeah. of it because it was so it was such a kind of joyous moment every time I would go and visit to do a studio visit, this joy came from this cluster of of paintings. And so we wanted to kind of incorporate that for to to give viewers like a, a nice 
that kind of <laughs> feeling, you know? Um, and do you want to talk a little bit about that at all? Um, yeah, there, I, I started hanging them on the, we'd have very few wall space left <laughs> in the house. And I started hanging them on the uh, staircase that goes down to the basement. So I would see them more often. I, I realized that just seeing them and being with them just kind of triggers other work. Um, and uh, I just started, yeah, I just started hanging and pretty much with just like an inch in between. Um, and it became something other. Uh, we had a, a friend of mine, Phyllis, who was at the opening. She looked at it and she's like, I see Star Trek. <laughs> which, <laughs> which when we were hanging it, um, I didn't see this in my house, but when we were hanging it, um, we were nicknaming this the galaxy because there's so many things in orbit. <laughs> like, there's like little worlds and, mm -hmm. and such. Um, but it, I don't know. <laughs> Standing at, I know not everybody is. You're kind of looking at us this this way, but when you have a chance, you know, to come over this way and kind of look, you know, because here <laughs> is this assembly um, of you know the stencils that are happening here and the drawings. The drawings and the stencils were not here in the original exhibition. They're just here to kind of let you see a little bit. It's very generous of the artist to bring all these things in, like a peek into the studio, what it might look like. And did you, do you want to talk a little bit about these drawings that we have coming up? Oh, sure. Uh, so the, the drawings that you see around are drawings for the, the shape canvases. Um, I don't, I, the rectangular ones, I, I just draw on the canvas. I don't have these pre-planned. But the, the shape canvases, I do. Um, and I made... Um, this stencil specifically for this piece. Um, and I, I made it not only for, for uh, achieving this drawn line, but I also used it, uh, I don't know if everybody knows what a router is, but a router is um, a tool that it, it spins like a drill, but it has a blade on the shaft. Um, and it also, you can also, it, you can also change the head of it and the tips of it. Uh, but the one I specifically use has a wheel on it that will follow any shape, like a guide. Uh, and then you can have another piece of plywood. So then it cuts the shape that's underneath. Like one layer is being cut one layer's got the wheel with a guide on it. So it's following whatever shape that you're using. And, uh, so I use this to build the understructure stretcher bars for, for the outer curve. Um, and uh, that's a whole process. Yeah. Which <laughs> you can see on the film over here. We right? have a moment there. It's um, so you can have that visual of the process. And actually, is that the same one right there? Yeah, that's the same one that you're drawing right there. That's the uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. That's really great. Um, but some oh, a lot of these I've um, some are trays and platters. I left. A few of my favorites at home by accident or smaller trays that are older. Um, but some of these I just bought like from plastic stores, canal plastics, and I was spending a ton of money. And then uh, I started cutting my own. Um, and you can also use the router to make them increase the, the circumference by like an inch and a half because of the body. You could, actually follow the body of it. So I started creating my own and, and then I found a Rockler jig um, that is beyond like comprehensive. I was so excited.
say it when I found it because there's no there's no real tool like a compass. Uh, a compass creates a circle pretty easily, but nothing. There's no, no there's no drawn. I found a jig, but uh, other than that, you gotta find. I've been finding all these things. And I feel like at one point too, you were telling me like, um, you know, I feel like as an artist, sometimes you start to gravitate towards something and then all these things like find you, mm. you know, that you had this uh, oval painting and then you went into a store and found an oval frame yeah. that, that um, <laughs> fit right over top of it, you know, that you're kind of uh, channel all these, these shapes to you. And I think you, you did talk a little bit about why you were using um, the oval. Um, do you want to talk a little bit more about that? Um, yeah, I, I, I find the oval more interesting as opposed to a circle. Um, a circle a circle's really difficult to compose because it's it becomes a bullseye for one thing. Um, but the oval, you can shift it around and uh, I, I love like in this piece over here, I love that there's the two larger ovals are um, that they're next to each other, but you can shift one and it becomes like two different bodies in a way. Um, you get tension. And I also love when, I also intentionally, um, I intentionally try to make this happen where intersections are coming together. And that's that's just a little game that I have with myself <laughs> when I'm doing it. And I get excited when it really does work, um, like in here. And I highlight, usually try to highlight them or, or make something break through it. And um, But I also, I've always been intrigued with the thought of somebody looking at a painting and uh, where their eye goes. And an oval, uh, an oval can kind of, the line can kind of guide you all the way around the, the piece and just kind of find different dimensions. And I think we were talking about this and that's where the name of the show came from, Unexpected Dimensions. And <laughs> 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 Um, but yeah, I, I just, I, it's, it's great to, I just like moving the, the ovals around because you can turn it and it'll, you can make the, the oval meet three sides of canvas as if you, if you had a circle, you'd have to have a circle that was that size, that width. Um, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. That's great. And, um, yeah, do you want to, I don't know if you wanted to talk a little bit about um, the brushwork, um, because I know that you have made things, um, and, and I feel like from Pratt, and we have another Pratt person here, B, <laughs> in the audience, um, that was, so we've seen your work for a long time, and I, I, I know that you were interested in like brushing <laughs> marks. So you have like these brushy marks and then you have like very flat, you know, if you look at them, it feels very flat. And then you have like these brushy marks that show more dimension, I guess, too. I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about that at all. Um, it's more intuitive than, I think I touched on it before, it's kind of um, do what I feel the painting needs. If, if it starts, sometimes it starts out, um, too stiff for me, uh, and I feel I need it needs some of my hand, some of my brushwork into it. Um, and then other times I just I feel it need uh, some pieces need that strong, really uh, hard contrast. Uh, whether it's two solid pieces, uh, I mean two solid areas as opposed to real brushy. Um, but I. I I, I have found um, sometimes I, I, I feel like I, I can get too uh, um, too planned 
and I, I, I don't, I like to still have an intuitive side of, uh, where I'm just making it up and forcing myself. And like uh, this one here, I literally started uh, this piece. Um, I saw, a, a, I don't even remember the, the artist's name, but he went in and just slapped paint on uh, and just brushed it around, swirled it. I was like, huh, I wonder. <laughs> 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 Let me try that. And that, that's kind of what happened, as did this one. And I just started moving around without even thinking beforehand about the oval or how it was going to fit in. Um, and then I went back in with the oval and kind of trapped and centralized those shapes and pulled it in. But it, it, um, it caused me to, to, you know, let loose a little. <laughs> 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 and sometimes it was literally, you know, uh, we were running out, like, some, I'd be running out, we'd be running out of the house late or something, and Michael's like, we're well, on, let's go, and I'm like, still swirling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. And, um, there's, I feel like you were talking, too, about, like, these kinds of, these black and white paintings that are here and here, being kind of like a, a breakthrough painting for you. Um, yeah, so this one happened first. Um, and this is actually brought back from New Orleans. Uh, and I was, I was intending to paint more on it, but sometimes uh, uh, you just gotta step away from a piece when you, when you know something happened magical on it, and you gotta step away a lot of times and let it rest and then think about it and then come back. Um, and a lot of times the pain looks totally different. <laughs> but I'll, you know, there's other times where you come back and say, no, I don't need anything else on it. And that's kind of what this piece was for me. And I, I love, um, I was trying to achieve a balance between uh, uh, the light and the dark. And it's, it's kind of like a yin and yang uh, kind of balance. And, uh, and the proportions to this canvas are, um, so this is 15 by 30. So it's, it's actually two squares. And composing on a really long canvas is, can be difficult. Um, but I love what happened. So then that one came next. Um, and that one's two foot by four foot. So I use the same proportions, but uh, the ovals are different in the, but the, the action is the same. Um, and then, then this one came. Um, and this one I struggled with more. And, It was hanging vertically in my studio when I was painting it, um, and uh, I started, I guess the white area was too cakey at one point, so then I just put oil over it, and it kind of cured everything. <laughs> um, and it, but it sat for a long time in my studio, um, and then the, the lines on it and now it's one of my favorite pieces. <laughs> yeah, I think the, um, this, and you use a, a paint marker sometimes, so there's very crisp lines, and that, you know, that subtle change of the matte, you know, it being very kind of matte-like, and then that paint marker being so super shiny, and mm -hmm. almost the same value, of, you know, it's, it's so satisfying to see. Oh, thanks. Well, half half of this is oil and half is acrylic. So this this is oil and then this is acrylic. Uh, and I have to switch pens. So this is a water-based paint pen, and, and then this one is an enamel because it, it wouldn't have taken to the oil.
this guy um, is a leftover piece of Belgian linen that um, was from a uh, was from a, a dimensional piece that I, I had cut this this shape out of out of that piece. So that was kind of left over in it was just in my studio and I was uh, started playing with that shape of the old one. Um, and then I love the tension uh, that that shape can be to the left and the oval is like holding it up. Um, and I love that it it met um, in the intersections as I moved it around. But I feel like even though it's just a line hole that I can paint, you know, it's not implying the shape of anything, but it kind of, kind of is, just with a line. Uh, and that one I was planning to paint more than one. It's one of the ones that I pulled away from. And, uh, I said, no, it's enough. <laughs>
And I remember specifically uh, passing a billboard for first time. And a billboard is just a giant rectangle. But when you see it uh, at different angles, you know, one end is, uh, you know, appears to be shorter than the other. The one closest to you is longer. And I remember passing it fascinated by how it changed as you drove past it. And that drove, that drove a lot of, um, I think, the architectural play of, uh, especially with trapezoids in my work, that I allude to buildings and actual larger shapes, but kind of its perspective, maybe pushing one way or the other. And just, but I, I used to dream about that one. <laughs> I still get choked up. <laughs> 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 a big moment. Um, I was, I was little. His <laughs> age. Yeah. That, I didn't know any better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is 
it on the phone? Yeah. Oh. Oh.
pressure bar and that shape on the shape canvas. Uh, and a lot of people want me to show the stretcher bars as an object. <coughs> um, I don't think I'm ready for that right now. However, um, I have thought that I can see me stretching something transparent over the stretch, uh, stretchers um, and allowing you to see the structure of it uh, as well as the, the actual shape. Um, and I, I don't know if I get into plexiglass or, or maybe strings on it or something. I don't know, but uh, that might be a next step for me. <laughs> but I don't know what, I, I still would have to research what what's archival to, and would have the stretch that's translucent to go over. I don't want to start messing with resin or anything. Um, Yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs>